Okay, let's make a constructor and some tests for vector 3D. Uh, let's add these. Add new item. It's going to be a compilation unit. We're going to say, uh, let's be consistent with our naming. So it'll be vector 3D tests. Vector 3D tests. Uh, consistent with our naming there. Add. And then in here, let's just, if it helps to refresh, maybe looking at what we did before, we had to get the G test, that's number one, and then uh, we may need to do the math defines. Actually, we did our own constants, so we don't need the math defines. Let's build this and be sure that we still build just fine. And let's run it and make sure we still get green. Uh, right now we have. Oh, I left this breakpoint in there. Uh, Control Shift F9. Uh, close this file. F5 to continue execution. Control F5. There we go. All green. That's good. I'm feeling good. We should have taken out that pound to find these math to finds earlier because we made our own constants file. Okay. Anyway, we need G tests. So let's go to vector 3D tests and pound include G tests slash G tests H. And then. Thank you, Google Tests. Make the macros easy for us. Vector 3D. We're going to test Vector 3D construction. This will look a lot like the Vector 2D test, but instead be Vector 3D test. Let's pound include. Uh, it's going to be like this. Math slash Vector 3D dot H. And then it should be simple. Vector 3D. Oops. Oh, math. That's right. Using math vector 3d and to be honest in the end this file it will look a lot like like the vector 2d test file in fact you can kind of see it's taking on the same shape but again I'm not a big copy and paster I like to think through this stuff and make sure everything's correct uh, you can definitely skip the video if you want to so vector 3d instance and let's do negative 4.3 uh, 9.1 and 5. I'm just coming up with some random numbers. Expect float equal instance dot x will be equal to negative 4.3. Uh, I'm going to actually control L. Whoops. I control K. We want to do control L, control V, V, V. Instance dot Y, instance dot Z. And that should be a... 9.1, and this should be a 5. Now, I something just hit me. I wonder in the vector 2 to t, 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 t. Nope. We didn't test the default constructor over here. We should have. Well, let's, let's add that after we add this and get this working. Vector 3D default constructor. And here we should say expect float equal. Yeah, well, let's just... <sighs> Copy paste. I feel like such a sinner every time I do that. And these are all going to be zero. But then here we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this. Oh, these are doubles. I got to put the suffix on these like that. I don't necessarily have to with an int, but I'm going to just to be consistent. And dra alt drag for that dot zero f. So expect that to be like that. Control shift b. Build started. We forgot. Our pound end if here, pound end if, control shift B, uh, header stop initializing, cannot convert from int to vector 3D because we didn't even write the, the constructor. So let's let's go and at least stub it all out so we can get, a, get, get it to compile. So let's do vector 3D and we're going to do float X, float Y, whoops, float Z and just for now we'll just do that and then vector because we are testing the default constructor I'm going to add a default constructor and remember I'm going to say explicit here we, uh, because we don't want to implicitly convert uh, a number to a vector 3D let's build this I might be a little too early on the explicit but argument truncation from double to float Thank you. I'm missing more suffixes. Control Shift B. 
And that was a warning. That was an error. But remember, we just turned on warnings as errors, and we'll heed the warnings. That forces us to heed the warnings as much as possible, or at least what I think are reasonable warnings because we're set at warning level 3. Uh, let's run this. We should get some red. Okay. Oh, this failed. This failed. This failed. I'm feeling good. Let's commit this and then make the red go away. So I'm going to pause this, commit it. Okay, uh, let's let's implement these. So, go to vector 3D, and I'm going to replace this default constructor with default argument values as we did before. Uh, and now, since these are going off the screen, I can take this off like so. And this line is getting a little long, though. So in that case, there's a few formatting options. Uh, one, zoom out. <laughs> Not ideal. I mean, some companies will have an explicit character width on a line, and you should be good to follow that. But what you can generally do, sometimes you can do wrapping like that, or you can do this. I've noticed in C++ though, a lot of programmers will put one on each line like that. Just You're either going to wrap or you're not, and if you wrap, you're going to wrap each one individually. Uh, these are all zero, and since we provided a default zero value, that's why it's important to put the explicit on here. And then we're going to use initialization like, as we did before. So x, oh, we need the colon here, x, x, y, y, z, z. The compiler is smart enough to know that this x is this member x and this x is the argument being passed in. So this one constructor takes care of the default constructor and also the parameter one. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, control F5. Let's, we should get some green now. Oh, we get some red. What did I forget? What did I forget? Value of zero, zero, actual zero, which is... <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> oh, no, negative four, three. What did we do wrong? Actual value is zero, but we got negative four, three. I told this thing to pass the x in and the x is, hmm, I'm going to put a breakpoint here. It's probably something obvious and stupid and simple, but maybe I'm too burned up to see it and you're just laughing at me because cause you can see it all right off. So we're passing 4.3. I'm going to hit F11. And we get in here and x, 4.3. Yeah, that should be good. I don't know. F11. So instance x is negative 4.3. So I said negative 4.3, 9.1. So that looks good to me. Uh, F10. And so far so green. F10. So far so green. F10. So far so green. So the error wasn't actually there. It's... Oh my gosh. That's embarrassing. And I'm actually not going to edit this out of the video because this proves the point that Jamie, <laughs> I lose, I, one, I'm a terrible copy paster. I am terrible at it. This, this is obvious. This is obvious. I should have, uh, control C, alt drag all this, control V, shift F5 to stop the debugger. I should have replaced those, but... Maybe it's because I'm talking on these videos that that uh, I messed this up, and it's it's I find it's actually easier to screw things up as I'm talking to other people. It's like texting and driving. You shouldn't do it. It's illegal in this in the state that I live in, anyway. Uh, probably illegal in your state too. And either way, it's just plain stupid, especially for someone who like me who rides a bike on the road, and I'll, I'll actually ride on the sidewalk so I don't get hit, just because I have a hundred drunk drivers essentially on their texting. Anyway. This is why I don't like to copy and paste, because there you go, I, I made a copy-paste error. That was embarrassing. But I'm not going to edit it out, because I, I think that just proved the point that I'm a terrible copy-paster. And how much time did we spend there debugging that? I spent a lot of my time debugging that, and, and now I just had an embarrassing moment on the video uh, debugging that in front of you, and you were probably laughing, saying, Oh, Jamie, please, you missed the default constructor. Put it in there, please. <sighs> anyway. So I think that proves my point that as little copy and paste that I can get away with, I will. Because I may or may not have made that mistake had I just typed those lines out instead of copy and pasted them. Okay, anyway, nice and green. We're good to go. Uh, is that going to make our other project build? No, because there's still 
other things we need to do over here before we're going to be able to build again. So anyway, next video.